Hi, my name is Madhu Rajakumar, and today we're going to be talking about spray drying. The theory states that a large range of consumer goods, including the food we eat and the medicines that keep us safe and healthy, are produced via spray drying. In the food and pharmaceutical industries, heated gas is used to quickly dry liquid product feed into powdered material for a variety of consumer and industrial purposes. These are the parts to a single pass system. The procedure starts when a liquid product feed is run through an atomizer, which is a specialized nozzle. To speed up the drying process, the atomizer sprays the liquid stream as a mist of tiny droplets into a hot gas environment. There are many different types of nozzle designs, which include the rotary nozzle and the pressurized nozzle. The atomizer used depends on the application. The product feed is spread out in the drying chamber, where the droplets quickly dry as the liquid evaporates, leaving the dried particles to be collected and packaged for further processing and distribution. The simplest type of spray drying, often known as a single pass system, vents the heated gas back into the atmosphere. This is the basic system flow. The typical spray drying system is made up of numerous important parts. The product feed is given to the atomizer which is situated at the top of the drying chamber through the feed line from the feed tank starting the process. The intake HEPA is used to introduce drying gas into the drying chamber. The product feed is dispersed by the atomizer into the drying gas as a fine mist of droplets. The material is placed into powder bags when it has dried and the particles have made their way through the system to the collection chamber. After that, the hot gas is released through the HEP outlet. These are the basic system temperature controls. The effectiveness of the process is largely dependent on the feed rate, inlet temp, and the outlet temp in any spray drying system. The boundary value of drying gas flow connects all of these factors. The drying gas flow is often maintained at a high value while the others are often changed to their most productive settings. The precise method of adjustment for each given product will vary depending on the system's configuration and design. This is the basic system layout. They include the feed tank, atomizer, drying chamber, a collection chamber, a heater, control panels, intakes, exhaust, fans, and pumps. These make up the drying system at its most basic level. To assist in moving the materials and gases through a system during manufacturing, all these parts are interconnected and operated through a network of ducts, which are highlighted here in blue. Application. Like I said before, the spray drying system is used mostly in pharmaceutical and food industries. Companies that run these machines are used to make powdered goods that we humans consume, where, whether it be medicines or foods. There are usually very small and it's stated that the particle size is usually below, below 10 micrometers, which is easy for the human body to digest. These are the strengths and limitations. Spray drying has the benefit of being completely automated and continuous. Other benefits include short residence times and compatibility for both heat sensitive and heat resistant foods. The method works with a range of feed materials as long as it can be pumped. However, Dry spraying can, I mean, spray drying only functions with feeds that can be atomized. Dilutions and solvents frequently, but not always, can address in atomization issues. There are also some materials that will melt when they come into touch with hot gas in the dryer, despite the brief exposure to high heat. And these are my references. Thank you.